Today sees a quick and easy review of the AMD R7-3800X CPU, with the primary comparison being against AMD's own R7-3700X that we already reviewed. The two CPUs are identical in every physical way, with the only differences being frequency boosting, so the 3800X goes to 4.5 GHz single core, allegedly, and has a base of 3.9 GHz, while the 3700X boosts to 4.4 GHz single core by the box and has a 3.6 GHz base. The 3700X should sell on average for $330 US MSRP, with the 3800X at $400 MSRP. This $70 delta is major, while the frequency difference really isn't. Today we'll be looking into whether it's worth it to spend $70 more on the same part with a higher stock frequency. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus Toolkit on store.gamersnexus.net. Our brand new toolkit just launched and contains 10 custom-made drivers for video card disassembly, repasting, and teardowns. The eight core tools are made of high-quality chromium vanadium alloy steel that's built for long service life and resistance to wear during use. The other two tools are carbon steel hex heads that were custom ground down for capacitor clearance on video cards. All the tools are easily mounted to a pegboard or stored in the GN made tool bag for easy transport. Learn more at the link in the description below. This will be similar to our 3600X review where we're really just focusing on the intra AMD comparison. 3800X versus 3700X. All the other CPUs will still be on the chart, but if you want the comparison of AMD's new eight core CPUs versus AMD's previous CPUs or versus Intel CPUs, check our 3700X review for a specific discussion on that. The charts have everything in them today. We're just going to breeze through them, though, and focus on the two comparisons for uh, AMD's 8-core, 16-thread, 3000-series CPUs. And uh, that's the main focus. So, uh, should be pretty quick. One thing here, this is developing to be sort of like the discussion of the 1800X CPU, which was a poor decision in general to purchase at $500 versus at the time a $1,700 for $330, which you could then overclock on every single CPU in a few minutes to equate 1800X performance. It's looking sort of like that, but a bit less extreme on the price differences. And the, there's no longer an overclocking requirement. So uh, another comparison would be the 2700X versus the 2700, 2600X versus 2600. There's that tax for the extra letter you get. Some of them have a cooler difference too, but we ignore that difference because for the most part, we think you should buy a separate cooler. So we don't really factor that into the conclusions. But overall, it's the same thing, except now both of them have, have an X at the end of it. So uh, that's what we're looking at today. Let's, let's go through some numbers. We'll go through the benchmarks and talk conclusions at the end. A quick frequency check will help us out first. So we ran this frequency check before digging into the 3800X. Starting with the max frequency line plotted out in Cinebench R20, we see that the multi-threaded workload shown at the beginning of this chart ends up maxing at about 4225 megahertz on the fastest cores during the all-core workload. Single-threaded performance averages closer to 4475 megahertz, 25 megahertz below the advertised speed, and hits 4,500 megahertz about a dozen times during the test. Blender was another good frequency test. Logging frequency during a Blender workload, we measured the all-core frequency at 4,200 megahertz, with some deviations to 4,175 megahertz average across the run. Overall, it seems reasonable to expect about a 4,200 megahertz all-core frequency with comparable cooling to ours, or about 4,475 megahertz single core with some spikes to 4,500 megahertz. And keep in mind that temperatures really affect these uh, frequency numbers with just Precision Boost 2, not PBO, just the stock settings, and that's something we explored in our frequency thermal response chart in a previous content piece. Next, we're going into the game benchmarks and production benchmarks, and for those, we have the 3800X in most of the charts. Uh, we've got overclocked numbers, but not all of them, because ultimately an overclocked 3800X and 3700X to the same frequency are functionally the same chip. Any difference you're seeing is mostly within run-to-run -run variance. All the Ryzen 3000 CPUs fall fairly close to one another, with SMT enabled in the Total War campaign test, from 155.2 FPS average for the stock 3600 to about 165 FPS average. The stock 3800X did show a 3.4% improvement over the stock 3700X here, but overclocking the 3700X brings it closer. The difference is down to frequency, and the 3800X does boost higher, beyond the 4.3 GHz all-core overclock managed on the 3700X, and so it makes sense that it places ahead. Although it's not much, this is the biggest improvement that we'll see out of the tests following. Next up is 1440p. The campaign benchmark is less prone than some others to GPU limitation, 
But even so, the 3700X and 3800X scored almost the same here at 157.8 FPS average for the 3700X and 159.4 FPS average for the 3800X, with 1% and 0.1% lows actually falling below the 3700X's results and within reasonable run-to-run -run variance. An overclock corrected those lows, but didn't improve the average FPS of the 3800X beyond margin of error. In the Total War Battle Benchmark at 1080p, the advantage for the 3800X is smaller still, just 1.5% over the 3700X in average FPS, stock versus stock. Overclocking the two CPUs to 4.3 GHz put them on about the same level as they should be, equal frequency, equal core count, and equal thread count. F1 2018 is next. The high average FPS results of F1 usually make performance gaps between CPUs visible where they wouldn't be in other games, but even comparing the raw averages of the 3700X at 277.8 FPS and the 3800X at 279.3 FPS is barely a difference at all. That's far less than 1% improvement for the more expensive CPU with overclocking on both chips yielding similarly minor uplift. 1440p is next for the same game. The rule of thumb is that differences are even harder to spot at 1440p than at 1080 with CPUs, with averages pushed down and leveled out by the GPU limitations that normally emerge. All four average FPS results for the 3700X stock OC and 3800X stock and OC fall within a range of less than two FPS from each other. Civilization VI is measured in turn times and is very reliable for CPU performance testing. For this one, the R73800X stock CPU finishes in 33.1 seconds per turn on average, which plays to just behind the 33-second result of a 4.3 GHz overclock and within variance of a 33.3-second result on the 3700X at 4.3 GHz. These are all within roughly the same area. They're within variance run to run. The 3700X stock CPU at 33.7 seconds, which is outside of the run to run variance, is still not particularly important in the real world. Assassin's Creed Origins at 1080p positions the 3800X at 119 FPS average, tied with the 3700X, with some run to run variance showing better 0.1% lows, although this is within testing variance. There is no meaningful improvement at 1080p between these CPUs. 1440p placed the 3800X at 112 FPS average, tied again with the 3700X. The overclock 3700X is minimally ahead and is within run to run variance once again, posting no difference for the 3800X. At 1080p, GTA 5 positions the R73800X stock CPU at 109 FPS average, which has it tied with the 3700X at 4.3 GHz and functionally tied about 0.6% ahead with the R73700X stock CPU. There's no meaningful uplift here, and either CPU would be fine, but the 3700X would save money that could be put towards something more important, like a good GPU. The same thing happens at 1440p, where the 3800X ends up about tied with the 3700X, only 0.2 FPS different on average, with the overclock 3700X not providing any meaningful uplift. Let's move on. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, the 3800X stock CPU ended up at 144 FPS average with an overclock with an error at 143. The 3700X stock CPU performed at 142 FPS average, which illustrates an improvement of about 1.2% stock to stock. Hitman 2 is up next for this one, tested verse at 1080p. The 3800X stock CPU operated at an average FPS of about 120, which is tied with the overclock 3800X result. The 3700X stock CPU ran at 118 FPS average, allowing the 3800X an improvement of 1.2%, and that's not worth it at all. 1440p is satisfying here in that it produces basically the same result as the previous 1080p charts. We observed the 3800X stock CPU at 117.6 FPS average, 3700X stock CPU at 117 FPS average, and overclocks for both at around 118 and within run-to-run -run variants of each other. Photoshop is the best demonstration of how the 3800X OC and 3800X scale relative to each other, aside from some gaming tests. In this benchmark, Photoshop has always demonstrated strong favor towards higher frequencies and has minimally favored higher core count. As we always say, this is the best illustrated by highlighting the tie between the 9900K and the 9700K, both at 5.1 GHz overclocked, where the thread difference has provided nearly zero value. The 3800X stock CPU scores 10 24 points, outperforming the overclock 3800X by 20 points. Like we've seen with other Ryzen CPUs, this is because the single core boosting frequency is higher than an all core override frequency, and so the 3800X does better when stock than with an all core overclock at a lower overall value.
The 3700X stock CPU is bested marginally here, but only marginally. It's a difference of about 0.6%. 7-zip compression positions the AMD R73800X stock CPU at 75,000 MIPS, or million instructions per second, which has it ahead of the R73700X stock CPU by 1.6%. The sad thing is that this is a rather large gap compared to the other tests, but is still generally meaningless. Decompression in 7-zip positions the 3800X at 97,000 MIPS to the 3700X's 95,700 MIPS. These two are once again functionally the same, and so there's no real reason to buy the 3800X over the 3700X in this workload. In Blender and rendering our in-house monkey heads test workload, the really heavy workload with a lot of different transparencies and types of materials applied, the R73800X completed the render in 18.6 minutes, putting it roughly tied with the R73700X at 18.8 minutes. This improvement is 1%. The overclock 3700X at 4.3 GHz ends up at 18.2 minutes, or 3.2% shorter time than the stock 3700X, so there's not much room for improvement with overclocking here. Overclocking got us barely anything and is almost within error range of the 3700X OC result, uh, or practically is anyway, and that's true for a lot of these other benchmarks as well. The GN logo render had the R73800X finishing in 22.8 minutes, which is again, only marginally faster than the R73700X stock CPU. There's functionally no difference here. Although Blender likes frequency a bit, it prefers threads first and foremost. You'd be better off just running a big cooler on the 3700X to get similar performance uplift. Adobe Premiere is next, starting first with the 1080p 60H.264 render. We observed the 3800X completing the render in 3.8 minutes when stock, tying the 3700X exactly. The 3800X overclocked completed the render in 3.7 minutes, placing it within error of the test passes. For reference, the 3700X overclocked also exhibited this behavior, placing within error of the stock 3700X CPU. This is an instance where the boosting behavior is minimally equal in how beneficial it is to an overclock, especially because Premiere doesn't remain fully pinned to 100% load per core and fluctuates in its load level per core, allowing cores to boost higher for brief periods. In this test, there is definitely no advantage to the 3800X, or at least not one that we could find. With our 4K60 H.264 render using similar settings to our YouTube uploads, the 3800X finished the render in 11.1 .1 minutes and completed the render 6 seconds faster than the 3700X. In other words, they're basically the same. Again, overclocking is, again, minimally beneficial and not worth it, especially if running at voltages above 24-7 safe voltages like we are. V-Ray, like Blender, is a thread-intensive renderer on CPUs. In this benchmark, the R73800X finishes in functionally the same time as the 3700X, posting only a 0.6 second improvement between the 3800X and the 3700X. This is within test variance anyway, so there's no gains here, and they're not only insubstantial, they're imperceptible. Overclocking gets us 1.2 seconds faster completion time on the 3800X at 4.3 GHz, which again, isn't worth it at all. So that's AMD's R73800X. Overall, the differences are definitely not worth it. You should save the $70. If you want one of these two CPUs, it should be the 3700X. And this is no longer even a, a situation of overclock to equate the performance. It's, it's run it out of the box, and you're basically there. There's max maybe 3.5%, something like that difference in one of the games. And that game in particular does have some run-to-run -run variants that's wider than the rest of the games. And then we're seeing 1% to 2% differences in a lot of the other titles and production workloads. It doesn't seem to overclock any difference differently. We still hit a wall at 4.3 gigahertz. And so at the end of the day, you should just buy the 3700X between the two. We don't necessarily recommend the 3700X. It's not a bad CPU. It does fine. But it is much more embattled than the flanks. So the 3600 is pretty easy to recommend. It's, it's one of the, it, it is, we think, the best in class at its price right now for a modern generation CPU. Now, it gets a bit different when you start talking about Ryzen 2000 series chips where you can get a 2700 for about the same price or cheaper. You got two more cores, which might matter in some workloads, not others. But yeah, 3600 modern generation, pretty easy to recommend. 3900X, for what it does, pretty easy to recommend. Doesn't always win, but uh, the 9900K still kind of wins in the gaming scenarios there. Just clock for clock, it, it is still in the lead, and that matters. But those two CPUs from AMD, 3900X and 
its targeted work uh, workloads and 3600 and pretty much everything easy to recommend. 3700X, it still falls in that we're not quite so sure middle ground. We don't typically like to recommend middle of the road components because we think that the argument is much stronger on either end of it where if you can't afford the more expensive one, it might be worth going for the cheaper one and then just spending that difference on a better video card instead, which will likely matter more. It has use cases, of course. If you do need the extra four threads on the 37 or 38 series and you do stuff like Blender and you can't quite afford a 3900X, then yeah, it's, it's way easier to defend that purchase. But you can find all that discussion in the 3700X review. For this one, the conclusion is uh, don't buy the 3800X. It's a waste of money. You should just get the 3700X instead. Save the money. And this is, this is just part of AMD's market strategy where they saturate every single price point they can think of, use the same dyes across all of them, which is that part's brilliant, by the way, and uh, end up with roughly the same cost to assemble the chips, but can get $70 more out of it and have a way higher margin on that 3800X. So without a guaranteed higher bin, which is irrelevant here because they all overclock about the same, without meaningfully higher performance, we just can't recommend it. And it's as simple as that. It's Again, it is not a bad CPU, but in this instance, it is an overpriced CPU. And it's not even because of Intel. It's because of AMD's own product that they launched the same day. So that's it for this one. Pretty clear decision on this. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Oh, a quick note. Uh, the overclocking numbers we do, so we just, we just pump the voltage and get it stable at whatever we can all core, which is 4.3 here. And you'll want to run lower voltages, so you might not even be able to hit 4.3 all core uh, because we just do it for review, not for daily use. But anyway, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly by buying things like the shirts, the mod mat, or the toolkit, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.